Welcome to the Gambling Gauchos. I am your host, Ryan Mainville. Before we get into this video, if you have not already subscribed to the Gambling Gauchos YouTube channel, please do so right now. It'll help this channel grow a ton. And as we head into bowl season and Big 12 basketball, we have got a lot of good things coming your way. So make sure that you're subscribed to the Gambling Gauchos on YouTube. Give us a follow on Twitter, and then you can follow me on Twitter as well, at Ryan Mainville. But with that out of the way, let's dig into the Maui Invitational. So Maui is a very interesting tournament, and for good reason. Right off the bat, you have the fact that Texas Tech has not played in a tournament like this since 2019, where they played Iowa and none other than Creighton. In that Creighton game, they were without Jemias Ramsey, and they lost both to Iowa and Creighton. So this tournament, with this field, provides a great opportunity for Texas Tech. I mean, when you're looking at a bracket that contains teams like Arizona, San Diego State, Creighton, Arkansas, just to name a few, you are talking about some very serious competition and an opportunity to get yourself some resume boosting wins in just November. So this is a huge opportunity for Texas Tech and it of course starts with their game against Creighton. And really everything that Creighton does is going to revolve around Ryan Kalkbrenner. And there's good reason for it. And I think when you look at this film, you can see why. Kalkbrenner averaging 16 and a half points per game, just under seven boards, and almost a block and a half per game so far this season. He is a seven foot junior who is just made a living down by the paint. And I really think that you can see in here just some of his versatility. You look at this Holy Cross defense and they just have no option for him sealing down low on the block. This is obviously a guy that knows positioning. He knows his feet. He knows how to get open. There, he gets a very easy dunk on the block. Okay, Holy Cross going with some 2-3 zone, try to catch him off balance. Guess what? This is a veteran player. He knows better. He gets a seal on the block, catches a nice little pass. That's just too easy for the 7-footer. Here you can see him making just a really good two-end play. I think this might be his best play of the season. Play some great defense there. Doesn't try to do too much or block the shot. Just puts his hands up, runs in transition. Easy bucket. Those are points that you will take every single time as a head coach. Oh, and then you want to play him in the pick and roll. That's one of his greatest strengths. Well, guess what? He can also shoot the three. Kalkburner, a very, very dangerous player. A guy that you've probably seen a number of times on these clips already is number two, Ryan Nimhard, making the nice pass to Kalkburner right there. Now, Nimhard really might be the most important player for this offense. Now, why is that? Well, this season, he's got 27 assists to just two turnovers. Those are startling numbers, especially when you consider Texas Tech's turnover struggles. He is just a problem in the passing game, just always finds a way to get open guys shots. And this is as easy as it can get for Nimhard. A nice little lob. That is his bread and butter, finding open guys getting easy baskets. I know there are a lot of Texas Tech fans that are also Spurs fans, and I just want you to watch Greg McDermott's offense. It is just beautiful play design, especially out of sideline, out of bounds, and underneath the basket. He gets guys open, and he has the personnel on this roster to make a number of passes every possession and find open shooters. So Creighton is currently 4-0, and with that, they have played absolutely nobody. But I believe that with what we've seen on film, they have given a very valid reason for them to be 10th in the AP poll, which is where they're at. Obviously, a lot of that hype comes with the players that are returning, but I believe that they have a very good team. Outside of individual personnel, I think Creighton's biggest strengths on the offensive end are protecting the ball and scoring easy baskets. You want to talk about Texas Tech's turnover struggles? Look at this Creighton team. It's the exact opposite. Creighton is turning it over on less than 12% of their possessions this year. That's fourth best in the country, and they are also shooting 61.6% 
on two point field goals that is 10th best in the country. This is a team that knows how to protect the basketball and generate open looks for their best players. This is a tough matchup for Texas Tech just because this is a team that's experienced. They've got a guy anchoring them down low. They've got really talented players surrounding Nimhard and Kalkburner. Guys like Baylor Schreiman who they brought in from the portal. This is a good team. They don't foul a lot. They don't give up a lot of easy rebounds. They protect the ball. And I think that this is going to be just a really tough opening game for Texas Tech. But I'm glad that it's the opening game because this is a Creighton team that I wouldn't want Texas Tech leaving Maui without contending against because this Creighton team is going to provide a great test for who this Texas Tech basketball team is and where they can go. This is going to be some great daytime college basketball. And as a guy who loves watching college basketball, I'm really excited for this game because I think these two teams match up pretty well. I think it's going to be a good game, close game, one that won't be won until the final stretch. But unfortunately, given Creighton's ability to protect the ball and its experience, I'm going to side with the Blue Jays in a very, very close contest against the Raiders. I'd probably pick Creighton to win this game in sort of a 65-62 type of game. It's going to be gritty. There are going to be some offensive flashes from both teams. But ultimately, Creighton's ability to protect the ball, as well as the limited depth behind Daniel Bacho to defend Kalkburner, gives Creighton the edge in this game for me. So assuming that Texas Tech does unfortunately drop the first game against Creighton, we are going to look ahead at the rest of the bracket, which I know is sacrilegious for the gambling gauchos, but we got to do it. It's an invitational tournament. We got to look ahead to the competition. And so assuming that Louisville loses to Arkansas, which by all accounts they should, Texas Tech has a very easy second game on its hand. Uh, the Red Raiders will need to take care of business against the Cardinals because this is a game that will not really boost your RPI or your March resume if you come away with a win. But if you lose against Louisville, that is going to be a stain that you cannot wash off. And then looking even further ahead into the loser's bracket, playing for that fifth place game, I would likely go with Ohio State to make it out of that side of the bracket. In which case, I think that's going to be a really fun matchup for Texas Tech because I think Ohio State is still kind of trying to find their rhythm. They've been a team that's kind of been up and down throughout the past years in college basketball. This year, they've got a decent team right in the middle of the pack, not doing a lot of things extraordinarily well, but they are a power five opponent who is likely going to be going dancing in March. And so you want games like that on your schedule especially when you consider that you are headed back to Lubbock to play a slate full of non-conference cupcakes in Georgetown before Big 12 play begins. And so you need to take care of business in this tournament. If Texas Tech does end up coming on top with a win over Creighton, which by all means is very, very possible, that's going to give you a great win on your schedule, especially for RPI in March resume, this is a game that you want and that if you get it, it's a quad one win. They don't want you to know what a quad one win is, but I do. And a quad one win would be one against Creighton. And so I hope that Texas Tech take care, takes care of business because this is a stout Creighton team and they provide an opportunity for Texas Tech to get a quality win early in the season. Beating Creighton would likely mean that you move on to play Arkansas, assuming that they beat Louisville which would be a fantastic basketball game. I think that Mark Adams would hate how much he loves this Arkansas roster. They are just a bunch of lengthy guys, a bunch of versatile guys. And obviously Nick Smith Jr. is a future NBA player at guard who is out right now. And I don't think he'll play in Maui, but once that team is fully healthy, that is going to be a very dangerous Arkansas team. And so Texas Tech wins against Creighton, they have another opportunity to follow that up the next day with another top 10 win against Arkansas. This tournament is really all that you can ask for as a Texas Tech basketball fan or just a college basketball fan in general. You've got the opportunity to get some quality wins in a beautiful place 
And even if you lose the first round, even if you end up playing in the loser's bracket, you've got plenty of Power 5 competition to boost that resume, to boost that confidence, heading in to what should be a very difficult Big 12 stretch for a young and inexperienced Texas Tech team. Thank you all for joining me, Money Mainville, on this little look at the Maui Invitational. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like down below. Make sure that you're subscribed to the Gambling Gauchos on YouTube. Give me a follow on Twitter. Slide in my DMs. Let me know what you want to see. I'm here for you. I'm here for the people. So Gauchos country, let's ride. Love y'all.